Hi, I'm Joey with American Overhead Door and Dock, and today I'm here to help you out with specifications on overhead doors. Specifically, we're going to touch on sectional doors. First of all, you want to figure out what manufacturer you have to use or you want to use. If there's no specification on a manufacturer, there are a number of manufacturers out there. There are two different main types of sectional doors. Insulated pan first foam in place. Insulated pan doors typically carry an R value of roughly seven. Foam in place doors can range from seven up to 26, R26. The R value is very important considering lead specifications and also if you're going to be doing a cold storage warehouse the higher the better. The skin gauge works in the opposite direction. The lower the skin gauge the thicker the door is going to be. For instance a 27 gauge door is thinner gauge than a 20 gauge door. Foam in place doors typically come 27 gauge. This is because you have a thick layer of polyurethane insulation in between the two layers of 27 gauge material, which gives the door more rigidity. An insulated pan door typically comes in a nominal 24, 24, or 20 gauge. The color is another aspect that you want to look at. What color does the architect want the building, or what color does your owner want the building? Typically, you see most doors in white, but you can also get them tan, gray, and multiple other colors. Track size is another big thing to look at. Most doors out there on the market are coming in two inch track. Typically, you wanna specify three inch track to get a higher cycle count on your doors and also to have more rigidity and a longer life. The next would be spring cycles. Spring cycles start at 10,000 cycle, next would be 25,000 cycle, 50,000 cycle, and 100,000 cycle. A typical box building, you're gonna see 10,000 cycle, 50,000 cycle is the recommended for long life on doors. Vision lights. Are you gonna have a door with no vision, or are you gonna have a door that has a full vision section, or in between? Typically, we recommend to have at least one vision section on the left-hand side of the door looking out so that you can stay in contact with the driver while he's backing up. This is also good if you have a power operated dock leveler because your power is typically on the left hand side of the door so that your light communication system is on the left hand side of the door and everything will stay on that side of the door. Operation. What type of operation do you want for your door? Typically on big box jobs and spec buildings you're going to see push up pull down but you can also go with hand chain or motor operated, depending on specifications and what your owner or tenant needs. If you go with a motor operated door, you can integrate this with a control panel for your dock leveler. Weather seal. What type of weather seal do you want? Most doors you're gonna see a vinyl or a rubber weather seal, which is gonna seal the bottom, the sides, and the top of the door to the building. If you're in a food grade application, you're gonna to wanna to upgrade most likely to a brush seal. Rodents do not like climbing through brush and this helps keep pests out and weather out as well. Wind loading. This is very important and one of the most overlooked things in the industry. Wind, wind loading on doors is very important if you're in a high wind load area. No doors come standard wind loaded. So if your building is wind loaded and requires your doors to be wind loaded, you need to specify the pressure or the wind loading that you want. Typically what you see is struts added to the section to add extra rigidity to your door panels. Again guys, I'm Joey Swope with American Overhead Door and Dock and Peak Electric. Thanks a lot for sticking with me for overhead doors and loading dock specifications for your next project.